So I want to talk about your perspectives on leadership, some of the things you've learned on your leadership journey. But before we get into that, fill my listeners in on your story. What what ultimately kind of got you in the seat you're in here today? Okay. Uh, Well, thanks, Brandon, first of all, for having me. Um, A little bit intimidating, not my natural state to be here, but certainly excited and a fan of yours. Um, I did have the opportunity to read the book. Um, I just came back from Australia, so I did it old style. Author paper. versus editor I dilemma. Did. So the new book. I did Excellent. the new book, of course. Um, I, I hope it met your expectations. Absolutely. So okay, okay. a lot of the principles we've been talking about over time um, consolidated beautifully in the book, uh, so much so that I am using author editor with my team, that language, and also actually upon um, this week, making that book available to all of my team members wow. so we can all align around those principles. That's exciting. That's exciting. So in terms of what got me here, I was born in a little island all the way down the bottom of Australia called Tasmania. Not much going on there growing up. Um, next stop, kind of Antarctica. Um, so it was a beautiful place. So you went from Tasmania to Antarctica? I did not go to Antarctica, um, but next stop is Antarctica. The next stop was Antarctica yes. from Tasmania. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, um, and how many people are in Tasmania? About 600,000. Okay. Um, world famous for Looney Tunes character Taz. Of course. Um, but really not much going on. So from an early age, no one leaves Tasmania, but from an early age, I knew I wanted to. Um, didn't know what I was going to do. Attracted to business. Um, so after university um, and a year in Europe, I uh, returned and we went to the mainland and that was a big deal. The mainland um, started my career in Melbourne, uh, fortunate early on to do a graduate induction program with a large multinational company, uh, which really gave me exposure to a whole lot of different aspects of business um, and really gravitated me towards, um, you know, that being what I wanted to do. Now, was that the grocery store space at that point? At time? that point, and I, I wondered if you were going to ask me this, it was actually British American tobacco, so an industry that doesn't normally get um, talked about. Interesting. Um, but back then, it was one of the best training grounds, and honestly, to this day, I still um, am glad I'm not with that company today, but certainly it did set me up for a lot of success and very happy to have done that. Um, So following um, the tobacco company, I actually did the unthinkable and went across to one of the customers. Um, That's where I got into retail. So Mm -hmm. convenience stores, supermarkets, all around merchandise category management type roles. Um, And then what I found myself in was I never went looking for dysfunctionality, but it kind of found me. Um, So each of the roles I had, Um, was actually a transformation of sorts. Um, So a business that had either lost its way and was in trouble, a business that was wanting to sell, often both, um, and even a greenfield opportunity that I was involved in. So in 2009, um, I was approached by private equity um, and that was a turnaround of all turnarounds. So a business that was in known trouble, Mm. um, an automotive retailer there called Repco. Uh, So I this functionality attracted me. So I did move across there. We transformed that business in four to five years with a view to selling it. Um, and we did, we sold it to Genuine Parts Company here in the US. Uh, they operate the Napa Auto Parts stores, 6,000 stores, Fortune 200 global company, um, and beyond our wildest dreams, right? Um, so at that time, they asked if I wanted to come across here to help grow their retail business, uh, Napa. Thought that sounded like a pretty good adventure, um, but um, moved my wife and four kids. My oldest was a junior in high school, so you can imagine how that went, yeah. um, to the other side of the world um, for what was to be two to three years. So eight years later now sitting here, you can probably tell that didn't go quite according to plan. Um, and I'm now permanent uh, resident here in the US, um, house owner in Atlanta, permanent GPC US employee um, and uh, senior vice president sitting on the leadership team with the president. So very happy to be doing that. That's excellent. So when you originally came over to the States, that adventure in your mm-hmm. mind, how long did you think that would last? Two to three years. Okay, I so had, two to three, you had this in your mind, you're like, I'm going to do this kind of this tour of duty yep. for two to three years and then I'm going to go back to Australia. Yeah, yeah. So you can imagine in that time frame, I had three years to create change um, and I approached it with that deadline in mind. Um, so um, as I sort of got extended, I had to readjust and realign, but um, certainly um, I found myself as a retailer in a business that didn't know retail, um, which was kind of a good thing, I guess, for me, but certainly felt very um, isolated 
Um, they're a wholesale company, um, retails 20% of what they do, still $2 billion plus business, not insignificant, but treated with a degree of contempt culturally, um, seen as a clash to their core business. So I found myself asking questions like, hey, who does brand? Who does store design? Who does planograms? Who does merchandise? And as kind of everyone's looking at me, it's kind of like, well, you. Um, <laughs> so we did build a team over time and we, we got a lot of success, but it did put me very much into the weeds of everything um, and as a leader that um, period of time was very enjoyable but um, as my story goes it was hard to transition out of um, as my responsibilities started to expand and my role started to um, become bigger. So. Yeah so what I love about your story Cameron I'm a big fan of yours is that you know it's it's both a story of personal growth and change you start Tasmania and then you've all the different cultures you've experienced in environments you've kind of stretched yourself and put yourself in but it's also then a story of change in what you've been asked to do. Yes. Go into businesses and ask them to change, transform, get, get a different mindset. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's both of those in there. Mm -hmm.